Hello and welcome to this MicroFocus ZenWorks Configuration Management video tutorial discussing diagnosing content with ZCM 2017 Update 2 and the new commands to simplify content exploration. In this video tutorial we'll be focusing on object content. We'll discuss what content is and the physical locations on the primary server and the primary server's content sync status. We'll also discuss those new Zman commands in 2017 Update 2 that allows us information to the content without having to dig into the database. We'll briefly discuss the ZenWorks Managed Device databases and we'll also show some of the details in a demonstration. Finally, covering different resources and debug logging information. When we talk about content, what are we referring to? Bundles have action settings, some of which are content uploaded to the repository. These items are referred to as content and they are stored in the content repository directory which is a secure place on the primary servers dedicated to holding that content. Not all actions include content stored in the repository however like a launched executable or an installed network MSI. But others like install MSI actions or install files or install directories, imaging bundles, etc will create the action and an upload will occur to fulfill that action. Policies like Windows GPO policies or ZenWorks branding policy with an icon or background. These files, JPEGs, PNGs are all content. System updates are stored in the repository along with PRUs. These are also content. Each have their own set of files zipped and encrypted to a GUID for a name with a .zc or Zen compressed format. By the way, these cannot be unzipped. The ZenWorks Adaptive Agent will unencrypt the .zc file when it reaches the managed device. The GUID is an ACO or Assignable Content Object. Content Locations On the Windows primary server, you can find the content in .zc or ZenWorks Compressed format in the ZenWorks Home Work Content Repo Content Directory. For Linux and appliance primary servers, the content is a little bit different. It's in the ZenWorks Home Content Repo Content Directory. Now on the managed device, when they receive the content, you'll find the content in the native format buried in its Action GUID folder. On Windows, this would be in ZenWorks Home ZenCache Cache ZMD ZenCache. And for Linux and Mac OSs, the content resides in ZenWorks Home ZMD Cache ZenCache. This content is imported when using the command line zman command or in ZCC where content is uploaded using the ZCC helper if the object requires content. ZCM content status. The Novell ZenWorks configure minus C check content system command has been around a long time and is useful for comparing the primary server content with what the database has record of. It is used when troubleshooting content on primary or satellite servers. There are two options. Selection one would be look for content in the database that's not in the content repo. If this is selected and it finds content missing from the content repo, the results will be shown in the logs directory on that primary server or satellite server. The log will be labeled content repo missing log. For selection two, look for content in the content repo, not in the database. If this is selected, it will report content found in the content repo that doesn't exist or match the checksum compared to what's in the database. And again, the results will be shown in the content repo orphans.log in the logs directory on that primary or satellite server. This will only report the mismatches in the log files. It won't update the database. However, there are some sync and delete file switches that can be used with this command to make modifications to the database or file structure. See the documentation for use. You'll want to run this on every primary or satellite server that has content to compare its content to the database. Let's cover some Zman commands. The Zman contents commands new in ZenWorks 2017 Update 2 enable you to debug content related issues easily without having to run complex queries in the database. The first command is content create pending entry or CCPE. 
This creates a pending entry for the missing content in the database for a given server GUID or path. Content Trigger Cleanup, or CTC, triggers a content cleanup action which removes unreferenced content from the database. Content ACO Names, or CAN, retrieves the assignable content object, or ACO, given for a given content GUID. Bundles, policies, and system update objects are referred to as ACOs. So if you have a content GUID, then this command will give you the related objects like bundles or policies that it is related to. Now in reverse, if you use content names for ACO or CNFA, this retrieves the content GUIDs for the specified ACO path, meaning if you have the bundle or policy or system update name, you can find the content that is related to that object. The managed devices have three small but very important databases. File info, object info, and MD status. These in tandem manage the Zenworks on the managed device. File info DB stores a mapping of content versus Zen cache locations. The object info DB stores the object metadata and agent properties, setting details into cache. And the MD status stores statuses of bundles, policies, things like device refresh info, and many other components of Zenworks like the status of the icon if it's effective or disabled, etc. When troubleshooting debug log settings, you can refer to TID 3418069, and the basic logging commands can be set either in the Zenworks Control Center, at a command prompt at the managed device, or in the Zenworks Adaptive Agent Technician Application Settings on the managed device. Be sure to refresh the device after setting this at the ZCC console for the settings to be enabled immediately. Zach CC is not recommended to be run at any time or in a bundle especially. It should be in a controlled manner understanding the impact. It's best to look for root cause instead of running Zach CC because Zach CC may clear the evidence of the root cause prolonging a fix. If Zach CC is ran, Doing so will trigger a large amount of content needed to be copied again to the managed device, along with that record keeping in those database files. ZACCC waits for ongoing refreshes to complete, but it will purge from file cache, object cache, serialized entries under Zen cache folder, including SQLite DBs. If the agent is waiting on some data from Zen cache, then it needs to fetch the latest values from the server over the network during the next refresh rebuild cache entries or values again, otherwise pending action may fail. If bundles or system updates or PRU or patches were partially cached or distributed, but still pending to get installed, this may also fail. And if it's run before an install schedule, it can cause random failures during the install. And note, the managed device cache life maintenance runs on a cache cleanup in the background systematically every 14 days anyhow. So Zach CC should be run with caution. Let's get into a demonstration on the content commands. Let's navigate through some content information on this 2017 update 2 zone. So if we go to, for instance, let's say SQLite DB browser, this particular object has some content which also is a content object. And it's basically uploads to the content repository, this particular file, and after it downloads to the local device, it will install it to that location. This particular bundle also has a launch to launch it from that location as well. So now how do we determine what this particular action content object is? So if we're looking through logs, we'd know what to detect. Well again, our commands that we have are Zman contents. And in this case, we'll be using the can and the CNFA command. So if we take the GUID of the bundle object, And we do a Zman OGN object get name. Imagine you're in the log and you want to know what content this bundle has or the name of this bundle. You can do an OGN. Then if you want to see the content, you can do a Zman CNFA 
and the full path in the bundle name. The nice thing about the CMAN CNFA is you can also use the bundle GUID. And now you can see the content object name. Now the content object name makes us easy to determine how many objects has that content. For instance, if we do a Zman, C-A-N, we can then see that that particular action object goes to one bundle object, which is the SQLite DB browser. In order to find where the content is on the server itself, we can go to open up Explorer to Zenworks Home, Work, Content Repo, Content, and the first two characters of the action content object is the directory we want to go into. So in this instance, it's AA. Let's move this up a little bit. So we're going to go into AA, and there is our zip compressed encrypted SQLite browser before it gets to the local device. When it gets to the local device, it decompresses it and unencrypts it. Okay, so now we know the contents there. Next thing is to understand that there's a command out there called Novell Zenworks Configure Check Content System. And this has been out there for quite a while. But if you run that, you can look for content in the database that's not in the content repo, or look for content in the content repo that's not in the database. We'll take the default and select two. This will take a couple minutes to run as it gathers information to do its comparisons. Now it's finished validating the content. And if we look in our logs directory, We will have a content repo orphans. So this is an orphan in the content repo. Using those commands that we used just a minute ago, we should be able to navigate and figure out which bundle this particular content is having a problem with. So let's do a Zman CAN. Let's copy this guy. Hit enter. And this tells us it's used in two different bundles the Microsoft Office 2010 X32 install file sandbox and version 1. So now we know which content is actually orphaned and which bundle probably won't work. Let's also do another command and we're going to actually look for content in the database that's not in the content repo. Select 1, select 2, hit enter. Okay, that's complete. Let's go back to our logs directory. If you'll notice, we have a content repo missing. So these are missing items from the content repo. And we show that same GUID. So obviously, we won't find this content on this primary server's content directory, but let's check. And remember, the check content system command is run on each primary server to compare with that server's content and the database. The first two letters in the action content object GUID is CE, and yes, that content doesn't exist. And the report says it is missing on this primary server also. So how do we see that in a database aspect? Remember our SQL Lite browser? We have our content with AA that was successful. It's available. All these are available. It's a sync state. However, if you notice on the Microsoft Office 2010 X32 install files, it still thinks it's packaging them up. It's no longer available. So either while in transit, they got corrupt and it never finished. But in this case, it looks like it was trying to package them up and never completed. So if we go over to the host, we run this. We can see that it errors, obviously, because there is no content in the repository. And that's kind of what it's telling us. We look at the device. And 
and we look at the message log, we can see the content is not yet available to download, even though it was trying to bring it into cache. Now that we know that this particular bundle has a content issue, and that it was during packaging that it was having an issue, we can go back in here to the bundle itself, go over to the install, and remove the install file, and re-upload these install files so that it makes this bundle complete and working properly. So that helps us navigate where the content is. And you should be able to look at the service messages and the loader messages log for this particular content and what errors might have occurred during that time processing these files. And remember, we mentioned in the slides that Zach CC is not very good to be used. This should be done in a very controlled environment and not used if you're troubleshooting. The reason is, is if we go ahead and run a Zach CC, which is clear cache, and we go back over to our database, opening that file again, you'll notice that all the data is gone. We have to wait for the system to rebuild everything including if we went to the cache settings. Notice there's nothing in here anymore. The metadata is there with the databases, but before we had all the GUIDs and all the locations of all the cache in the Zen cache. So be very cautious about Zach CC. It may wipe out all your evidence when troubleshooting. Here are some MicroFocus ZenWorks Configuration Management 2017 resources. We have the 2017 update to document site. We have the ZenWorks Configuration Management public forum. We have the ZenWorks YouTube channel and the Ideas Portal. Also, MicroFocus ZCM 2017 Cookbook, TID 7018169, which references reminders and upgrade scenarios and also links to the documentation along the way. Hopefully this gives a better idea how to locate content of objects in ZCC. We covered what content is and the physical locations on the primary server. The content seek status on the individual primary server in relation to the database. We've covered the new Zman commands in 2017 update 2 that allows us information without having to dig in the database. We briefly covered the ZenWorks managed device databases that holds all of the statuses and tracking of the content and file information. And finally, the different resources and debug logging information. This concludes this video on how to diagnose content in the ZenWorks Configuration Management 2017 Update 2.